Today's fun project, I'm your host Ostar and I've got an 08 Toyota Highlander here behind me. Uh, the owner says that the alarm keeps going off sporadically throughout the night. Uh, it's happened more than once. It happens every time he sets the alarm. He can go out, unlock the car, which disables the alarm, shuts off, lock the doors, it sets, everything seems to be alright, and then boom, it just goes, the alarm starts going off. So anyway, if you look this up, the number one reason for this sporadic problem is the hood latch switch. I've got the latch already off. Later in the video, I'll show you how to install it, put it back in. It's real simple. Three bolts, uh, two pin connector here, and a cable for your hood release. Anyway, of course, you got to remove the grill, but I'll show you all that at the end. What we're going to do is we're going to go one step ahead. So it's very hard to diagnose this problem because, like I said, it's sporadic. You can't really catch it in the act we're going to test the switch. So most people just throw a switch in it, call it a day. We'll test this switch. I'll show you how the mechanism works. Uh, maybe we can see exactly if it is defective. And if it is, great. We could either bypass it or, you know, just replace it with another one. So anyway, let's go over to the bench and take a peek. So let me give you an idea what's going on here. There's a spring that goes from this point here over to here to this latch here this is where the the strike is where the hood actually comes down and latches in so basically right now this would be the open position so if the hood was up what you can do is you can take a screwdriver or some kind of metal piece just get in here now without the spring it's pretty easy and just push down okay so that's how it would be if the hood was latched now the way to release it is down here is this little spring you can just push this lever over to your left and then this will pop right back open that easily so you're open again. Now the reason you want to take the spring off and then close this latch is so you can get access to your switch. So there's two tiny little Phillips screws down in the bottom here. I've only got one in there right now. There's one there. There's one that goes here. Well, this switch rides on the cam right here. So right now the hood would be latched. This switch would be open. Okay, so I'm sorry, closed. The hood is closed, the switch would be closed. When this hood is open, okay, right in here, I want, to, want you to see that. Right in this area here, hopefully my fat thumb's not in the way. Right there, it rides on that cam. So when the hood is open, that would lock out like that because the spring's keeping pressure on it. And now the switch would be open. So basically the module knows when this switch is closed then it knows you know it's okay to set the alarm and it does its thing but anyhow that's the th that's the deal right there all you do is take out these two little screws we can do that let's do that now actually and then what we'll do is we'll uh, bench test this switch and you just need a simple ohm meter to do it and I'll show you that on the next step here Okay, so with both screws, you know, loose or out of the way, you just pull this harness out from down in here and you can wiggle the switch right up out of there. And this is what it's going to look like. So this is the part that rides oop, out of focus. This is the part that rides on that cam. And there's a little button down underneath this thing here. You can hear it clicking. Just a simple two wire. Let's put it in the vise here. And let's do some ohm testing. First, let me take this little screw out. I definitely don't, don't want to get screwed and lose the screw, that's for sure. Anyway, um, how should we do this? Let's, let's put the connector in the vise itself. See, if I had three hands, I wouldn't need the vise. If I had three hands, I'd be really dangerous. All right, so... I've got my cheapo multimeter here. That was the first one I grabbed. Right now, we've got an open. If I touch these leads together, we've got full continuity. Uh, we're down to about one. I guess we're reading one there, which is, uh, that's good. And right now with this switch, if it was in this position with this little flapper up and not down, this is actually closed. So the switch would be closed and the uh, hood would be shut. And let's see what the module would be seeing. So let's put this on here. Let me get my leads uh, set up. And then what I'm going to do is click this switch open and closed a few times. And we'll see where we're at. 
Okay, we're already high resistance there. We're at seven, five, six. Let me uh, click this shut. Okay, so right there, if the hood was open, that's what we would be seeing, or the module would see that it's, it's open. And I'm going to let off, closed. We're at eight, seven, eight. Do it a few times. So the resistance is like seven there. Oops, I think it just went to 34. Let me tap it a little bit. Okay, there we're at 15. There we're at 28. Yeah, the switch is definitely bad. Look at all that resistance. Okay, 50s. Yeah, this switch is definitely shot. So basically, when the uh, hood is closed and this switch is closed, it's thinking, the module's thinking that there's an intrusion probably because there's so much resistance and it's setting the alarm off. I'm going to give you guys a little demo. So what I did was, this has the passive key, you know, with the push start. So I set the alarm, I locked the doors, which basically sets the alarm and uh, put it on the other side, the uh, key fob out of here. So right now, here's that switch. We've got it obviously off the latch. I don't know if you guys can see it. So like I said, when it's in this position, normally right now the hood would be closed, okay, and this would have continuity. So what I'm going to do is pretend the alarm set, we just open the hood and we're going to open this switch by pushing this tab down. So as soon as I push this, I'm going to give you a 3, 2, 1 count. Make sure your speakers are all the way down and your earbuds are out because this bitch is going to be loud. So. I'm just, I'm just proving the point here. So anyway, here we go. I'll set the alarm. It, sh it should start honking. And I'll grab the key fob and turn it off. Here we go. One, or three, two, one. It's so anyway, um, whether we got corrosion in here or worn contacts or both, I don't know. But this is our problem. And uh, we can do the old bypassy bypassy or replace the switch. That's up to the owner. For right now, I don't have the part. I'm going to do the bypass on it. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how to put the latch all back together. Here's something important to note. If you decide to just unplug the switch and leave it off, your alarm is not going to set. So keep that in mind. The, uh, the module knows that there's something wrong there. It's not going to set your alarm. So someone can just reach in, unlock the door, and open the doors. It's not going to go off. So you need to, by bypassing, you either need to uh, make a loop here uh, so it always has continuity, or, like I say, just get a new switch. So keep that in mind. So it goes from here over to here. Got the main spring back in. And it actually goes in this way with the tiny spring towards us. There's a little spring back here. Anyway, the first thing we want to do is get the cable in. There's a little little notch right here so all we do is set this little ball right in here you'll see it when you take it out um, and then that cable just sits down in here like that like just like this like so hopefully you can see that and basically all we got to do now is there's three bolts one here one here and one here so we lift this up now this piece here goes behind this metal bracket and then I've got my bolts and get this started And that's it. And of course we got the connector, but let me show you the center bolt. It's a little bit tricky. Um, if somebody hasn't taken yours apart and still has the cap. So the center bolt, or I'm calling this one the center bolt down here, has this little, there's the bolt, and it has a little cap like that. So basically you can't get to the things <laughs> without popping the cap. So what you do is, um, when you're taking it apart, and by the way, these are 10 millimeter. All you need to do is snug that up. And oops, I got the wrong socket. There it is. 
snug this up. You don't have to get crazy. Oop, reverse, forward. There we go. Let's get that started. And I'm looking like at the witness marks, they call it, where this thing was before. So this has some, uh, somewhat of an adjustment, a little bit, not much. And then we got this one down here. Okay. And then uh, we take this little button, little cap, just pop that in there. That's good. All right, so with that buttoned up, I took the original switch, I cut the wire, soldered the joint, used uh, some heat shrink and some electrical tape here. So now all I gotta do is just plug this in like that. So that's bypassed. What I'll do is um, this has a little clip. I still have the factory clip right here, which goes in under here. So hopefully I'm getting that on film. There we go. That'll just go in there like that. Just sit in there. And we just have to put this uh, grill back in and then the, this cover, this trim piece. So next step, we want to put the grill in. Of course, you'll be doing this in opposite when you go to take it off. But it has these tabs along the bottom here. What do we got? Six of them. These little tabs slide right into the bumper cover. So just set that down in there gently. Don't scratch anything. And uh, push. That'll lock right in. And then you've got these holes at the top where we'll just use some clips. So after you get the two metal bolts in, you've got four long clips right here. These are, I call them long, they're about an inch and a quarter. And then you got these short guys, that's for the black plastic trim, we'll do that next. But these are easier enough to uh, put in, they just push in, and then you push this down, it snaps in. Now when they're in there and you wanna take them out, they're gonna look like this. Just take a small pick or screwdriver, pop that up like that, and then pull the whole thing, it'll slide right out. So I already got this one in. There's two, three, and four. Okay, so then we drop this on here. And now we've got all these little shorties. There's a whole bunch of them. All right, then you got about 11 of these little guys. Just pop them right in. You may want to pop this tab up first. Hold on. There we go. Same deal with these. Just make sure that little tab is, oop, make sure this little tab's pushed up before you try to s squeeze them in there and just push down. And it'll hold it in place for you. So I hope that helped you out if you're having this problem. Uh, that switch, make sure you cross-reference the part number with your VIN, get, make sure you get the right one. Toyota changed them several different times, so there's different switches out there. The connectors are different. The contacts are different. It might be open when you need it closed and vice versa. So anyway, or you can do the old bypass trick. So anyway, thanks for watching. This bad boy needs a water pump. Maybe I'll put a shot of that nasty noise in this video right now. Wobbling like crazy. Yeah, that's, uh, I'd say it's gone. So I can see the pulley wobbling. So hopefully I'll get that one on uh, film. I'm going to need to raise the engine up a couple inches to get access to those bolts. That's a fun one. You won't want to miss it. So anyhow, thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.